back with a firestorm over Donald Trump's comments about Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly. Trump now says Kelly owes him an apology, not the other way around. The fact is, she asked me a very inappropriate question. She asked, she should really be apologizing to me. You want to know the truth. She got very angry during this question because of that, because she couldn't even finish the rest of the question because the crowd went wild. And I, in discussing it later, I said uh, blood was, she was so angry that blood was coming out of her eyes, blood was coming out of her. And then I, I didn't even finish the answer because I wanted to get on to the next point. But I was referring to, or if I finished it, I was going to say ears or nose because that's a, a common statement. So let me just ask you, just to clarify, if someone made such a comment about a female journalist suggesting that they were on their menstrual cycle. That would be inappropriate. Meantime, our NBC News survey, Monkey Poll, a brand new one taken Friday and Saturday, shows Donald Trump gaining support following last Thursday's debate. He's up a point from our survey just last week before the debate and continues to hold that double-digit lead, rounding out the top five. Senator Ted Cruz, Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina, and Senator Marco Rubio. They're followed by Jeb Bush, Governor Scott Walker, Mike Huckabee, and Senator Rand Paul. Joining me live now, Daily Beast Senior Politics Editor, Jackie Kucinich and Republican strategist John Fury. Thank you both for joining us. Uh, John, let me first start with you with the poll numbers here. Jeb Bush, notably not in the top five. Governor Scott Walker, not in the top five. Donald Trump still leading double digits. He's gone up, and now he says he deserves the apology. What's your reaction? <laughs> I'm not going to put a lot of faith in Survey Monkey. I will say this. I think that Donald Trump, is, this reminds me of an endless episode of Celebrity Apprentice. It's like a reality show, not reality. And it frustrates me as someone who wants to see a substantive debate of substantive issues with real leaders who have actually accomplished something in the political arena. I mean, Donald Trump, you know, he's a misogynist. And it's a joke. And anyone but he's supporting Donald Trump has to understand that if he is our nominee, we're going to get killed in the next election. So I think it's very frustrating for people who want to have a real debate about real issues. Well, listen, don't let the name of the survey fool you, the monkey part, <laughs> because apparently they are reliable uh, survey. I, I, I get it. The name actually struck me as odd as well. But nevertheless, um, their polling work um, has uh, been seen as credible. And right now, um, their numbers show no change in Donald Trump. Do you feel that this reflects, how oh, dare I say, reality? <laughs> or um, it's just, as people keep saying over and over in your world, it's just so darn early. Well, I, I think it's really, really early. I think that in this early stage, people go for the celebrities, the people they've heard of. And let's face it, Donald Trump... They never heard of Jeb Bush? Because he's still uh, not in the top five on this, and well, I'm mystified by that. I, I'm a little bit mystified as yeah. well. But he's got the bigger organization. He's got a lot of money. Yeah. And I think ultimately he's got the staying power. And the fact of the matter is uh, Donald Trump has this celebrity status, and we are living in this cult of celebrity. And people mm -hmm. understand that Donald Trump also is tweaking the establishment, mm -hmm. tweaking all politicians. And people kind of find that very amusing, yeah. and that's why they say they're going to vote for him. It's so interesting. Um, Jackie, Carly Fiorina made the rounds as well. She was on Fox News. Uh, her fundraising has increased, she said. Uh, she was one of the first, I believe, the first of the candidates to come out strong against Donald Trump in these Megyn Kelly uh, comments here. Now you are seeing, I believe, just this slow boil of support surrounding her. And what perfect timing for the Republican Party, who has not won uh, the female vote. I can't remember in how many years now off the top of my head, but in a couple of election cycles, you now have uh, the person as far as the front runner buzz being the female candidate who was left off the main stage. What's that great timing? Well, right, and so there was only one or two tickets out of that, or that so the sort of JV low card debate, and Carly Fiorina cur uh, clearly grabbed it and is running with it, and yeah, she is in the perfect position among all of these candidates to go up against Donald Trump. Now we'll see how he reacts to that. I mean, he, what, one of the reasons his numbers seem to be holding is he is just being. He hasn't changed anything yeah. he's saying, and for the people who really like him, they love this, so why would they be looking at someone else? But in terms of Fiorina, the thing that struck me about her, she is a very different candidate than the woman who ran against uh, Senator Barbara Boxer. Mm -hmm. She's polished, and she, she really is yeah. pushing uh, her CEO credentials as someone who could be yeah. a viable candidate. Well, her CEO credentials that are heavily uh, scrutinized as well, I mean, totally. from the stocks of her company doing better after she left to the thousands of people who were laid right. off, that will all be addressed 
address later. But set this aside, I do think it's interesting as well, Jackie, that she's the only candidate. And I've watched several interviews that can really use aggressive language directed at Hillary Clinton. Every interview, she flat out calls her a liar, which you don't see the male candidates do. So she seems to have an opening, dare I say, because she is the only female on that side who can use some of the language certainly that uh, would not necessarily be um, seen as acceptable by some of the other male candidates, I think. You know, Carla Fiorina, very early, before anyone was really paying attention, was doing this. This is how what she was doing. Mm -hmm. to, to, she was trying to set herself up as the alternative to uh, as the, as a uh, the the female Republican alternative to Hillary Clinton. And you're going to keep hearing her do it over and over and over again because it really seems to be working for her among uh, Republicans. And John, let me go back to your favorite topic, Donald Trump. Here, <laughs> almost all of the candidates uh, admonished his comments. Mike Huck. Be. Let me play what he said when asked if Donald Trump should backtrack here. Should Mr. Trump apologize to Megyn Kelly? I'll have to leave that up to him. Plenty of people who can talk about Donald Trump. I'm the only person who can talk about what Mike Huckabee is doing running for president. And I get it, the other candidates are trying to say the same thing. They're tired of talking about Trump. But that's a very direct question regarding these comments that he made. I have to tell you, there are a few people who noted at the debate when Megyn Kelly listed off all the ugly names that Donald Trump had called other women, uh, and he said, oh, Rosie O'Donnell, the crowd kept laughing. That crowd was willing to laugh when he called Rosie O'Donnell a pig, but now some of those same people have pitchforks behind Donald Trump. So the question is, is it okay when he calls this liberal television host a pig, but when he calls um, someone who's seen as a leader of Fox News coverage, this awful thing that he claims that he wasn't saying, then it is certainly uh, misogynist and sexist and, and some of the outrage that perhaps we didn't see from conservatives when it was okay to call Rosie a pig. Listen, misogyny is a terrible campaign strategy. You know, the fact of the matter is that there are many more female voters than male voters, uh, and it's also just bad form. It's bad form what he said. It's bad. It's, it's But why it's the not laughs polite. when it was about Rosie at that forum and it's, not about Megyn Kelly? It's not, it's not appropriate to do it about Rosie either. Mm -hmm. I, th I don't know why. I wasn't in the room. I will say that misogyny is bad politics and bad form, and, you know, it should be condemned directly. And Mike Huckabee shouldn't be trying to get around those questions. Going, you know, we got to call Donald Trump for what he is, a misogynist, and, and leave it at that. And, and then try to get a, a debate yeah. on real substantive issues, because this country has some real problems that need to be fixed. Absolutely. Thank you both. To go up against Donald Trump. Now, we'll see how he reacts to that. I mean, he, what, one of the reasons his numbers seem to be holding is he is just being himself. He hasn't changed anything yeah. he's saying. And for the people who really like him, they love this. So why would they be looking at someone else? But in terms of Fiorina, the thing that struck me about her, she is a very different candidate than the woman who ran against uh, Senator Barbara Boxer. Mm -hmm. She's polished, and she, she really is yeah. pushing uh, her CEO credentials as someone who could be yeah. a viable candidate. Well, her CEO credentials that are heavily uh, scrutinized as well, I mean, totally. from the socks of her company doing better after she left to the thousands of people who were laid right. off, that will all be addressed later but set this aside I do think it's interesting as well Jackie that she's the only candidate and I've watched several interviews that can really use aggressive language directed at Hillary Clinton every interview she flat out calls her a liar which you don't see the male candidates do so she seems to have an opening dare I say because she is the only female on that side who can use some of the language certainly that uh, would not necessarily be um, seen as acceptable by some of the other male candidates, I think. You know, Carla Fiorina, very early, before anyone was really paying attention, was doing this. This is how what she was doing. Mm -hmm. to, to, she was trying to set herself up as the alternative to uh, as the, as a uh, the, the female Republican alternative to Hillary Clinton. And you're going to keep hearing her do it over and over and one else. But in terms of Fiorina, the thing that struck me about her, she is a very different candidate than the woman who ran against uh, Senator Barbara Boxer. Mm -hmm. She's polished, and she she really is yeah. pushing uh, her. 
CEO credentials as someone who could be yeah. a viable candidate. Well, her CEO credentials that are heavily uh, scrutinized as well. I mean, totally. from the stocks of her company doing better after she left to the thousands of people who were laid right. off. That will all be addressed later. But set this aside, I do think it's interesting as well, Jackie, that she's the only candidate. And I've watched several interviews that can really use aggressive language directed at Hillary Clinton. Every interview, she flat out calls her a liar, which you don't see the male candidates do. So she seems to have an opening, dare I say, because she is the only female on that side who can use some of the language certainly that uh, would not necessarily be um, seen as acceptable by some of the other male candidates, I think. You know, Carla Fiorina, very early, before anyone was really paying attention, was doing this. This is how what she was doing. To, to, she was trying to set herself up as the alternative to uh, as the, as a, uh, the the female Republican alternative to Hillary Clinton. And you're going to keep hearing her do it over and over and over again because it really seems to be working for her among uh, Republicans. And John, let me go back to your favorite topic, Donald Trump. Here, <laughs> almost all of the candidates uh, admonished his comments. Mike Huck. Be. Let me play what he said. You can talk about what Mike Huckabee is doing running for president. And I get it, the other candidates are trying to say the same thing. They're tired of talking about Trump. But that's a very direct question regarding these comments that he made. I have to tell you, there are a few people who noted at the debate when Megyn Kelly listed off all the ugly names that Donald Trump had called other women, uh, and he said, oh, Rosie O'Donnell, the crowd kept laughing. That crowd was willing to laugh when he called Rosie O'Donnell a pig, but now some of those same people have pitchforks behind Donald Trump. So the question is, is it okay when he calls this liberal television host a pig, but when he calls um, someone who's seen as a leader of Fox News coverage, this awful thing that he claims that he wasn't saying, then it is certainly uh, misogynist and sexist and, and some of the outrage that perhaps we didn't see from conservatives when it was okay to call Rosie a pig. Listen, misogyny is a terrible campaign strategy. You know, the fact of the matter is that there are many more female voters than male voters, uh, and it's also just bad form. It's bad form what he said. It's bad. It's, it's But why it's the not laughs polite. when it was about Rosie at that forum and it's, not about Megyn Kelly? It's not. It's not appropriate to do it about Rosie either. I think I don't know why. I wasn't in the room. I will say that misogyny is bad politics and bad form, and you know it should be condemned directly. And Mike Huckabee shouldn't be trying to get around those questions. Going, you know, we got to call Donald Trump for what he is—a misogynist—and and leave it at that. And and then try.